So by a show of hands, how many of you knew exactly what you wanted to be when you grew up? How many of you are still trying to figure it out? I see you. <laughs> well, it took me a long time to figure it out because I wanted to be quite a few things like a professional model because your girl thought she was cute, okay? Then I wanted to be a gospel recording artist. But then I wanted to be a homemaker, get married, have some babies, and live happily ever after. But instead, I got a degree in accounting from Oral Roberts University and worked 16 plus years as a litigation's claims specialist until one visit to an all girls group home changed my life forever. My name is Ty G Charity and I'm a social impact junkie. I wake up to make a difference. But that wasn't always my story. You see, this small town girl from Baker, Louisiana never imagined one day being a social entrepreneur, a CEO, a film producer, or an adjunct instructor. And I certainly never imagined getting a master's in business because nothing in my academic history would have ever suggested any of those things. I was an average student who did just enough to get by because I struggled with dyslexia but didn't know it at the time. But then purpose, <laughs> purpose became my alarm clock. It all started when I attended a workshop with my husband who was teaching an acting class at an all girls group home. During that visit, we were invited to tour the facility. And as we walked through the girls dorms, I noticed in these small rooms were several twin bed sets. And above the girls beds were their individual pictures and below the beds were their dresser drawers. And I remember thinking, wow, this is their only personal space that they're sharing with strangers. It was a stark reminder of the privilege I had taken for granted, a loving home, a supportive family, and a sense of belonging. Well, as we continued to tour the facility, I noticed a group of girls misbehaving. I'm talking acting out. And as I watched and observed, I could see and feel those girls' pain and insecurity. I wanted to do something to give back, but didn't know what or how, so I did nothing. Well, three years after that visit, the Great Recession happened, and I found myself unemployed and asking again, what do I want to be? Or more importantly, who do I want to be? Well, let me tell you, that question led to a whole temper tantrum with God, okay? I was so angry and frustrated and needed to know what on earth was I even here for? Oh, I got real bold one night. I started yelling and screaming and making demands at God as if I were Tom Cruise interrogating Jack Nicholson in the film A Few Good Men. I want the truth. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so glad God didn't yell back, girl, you can't handle the truth. See, I was at a crossroads between being controlled by fear and anger from years of corporate discrimination or being fueled by purpose. Well, that night my pain met purpose. I remember the girls from the group home and Kids in the Spotlight was birthed, a nonprofit organization that provides a platform and outlet for young people in foster care to write, cast, and star in their own short films, telling their stories their way as a catalyst for healing. The program culminates in this annual Kids Film Awards, which is our version of the Academy Awards and Golden Globes for kids in foster care. And for the past 15 years, after having produced over 100 short films, my team and I have witnessed the profound impact that storytelling have on those who have been marginalized by society's indifference. And I must tell you, the realities and obstacles facing kids in foster care are truly disturbing. Here in America, we have nearly a half a million kids in foster care. And 10% of that number is right here in LA County, enough to fill our sports arena, home of our beloved Lakers, not once, but twice. And did you know that only about 
50% of kids in foster care graduate high school, and that 50% of our homeless population and 80% of prison inmates can be traced right back to the foster care system. See, we have far too many young people who've experienced unimaginable trauma, aging out of a traumatizing system with legal adult status, but without guidance or support to help them navigate life, creating this perpetual cycle to homelessness, incarceration, human trafficking, and even suicide. But what if we could flip the script? What if social enterprises became the avenue to turn adversities into achievement? See, my organization pioneered an innovative approach that blends storytelling and filmmaking with trauma-informed training, giving youth in foster care autonomy over their stories while teaching them crucial life and vocational skills. Then to build on that model, we launched a production studio with purpose to connect youth aging out of foster care to jobs in the entertainment industry, set up as a social enterprise. And it is so rewarding to see our young professionals who have moved on to direct big budget projects for companies like Nike and the CDC, or young people like Kathy, who found the courage to testify against her predator after completing our program, or Noelle, who attended 18 different high schools in four years, still managed to graduate despite the odds stacked against her. Oh, and I must tell you about our three amazing young people whose film got accepted at the White House Film Festival in 2016, where they met President Barack Obama. Yes, a life-changing experience. See, in the words of Dr. Maya Angelou, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Well, I'm here to tell you there are far too many kids in foster care who are bearing the agony of their untold stories. But the good news is we can all help change that narrative and the outcomes for our kids. Did I hear somebody say how? how? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hear somebody say how? how? Oh, yes, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Imagine if every business, regardless of its size, adopted a social enterprise model or invested a minimum of 1% of their profit toward the advancement of youth in foster care. And if we as patrons were very intentional about supporting businesses that bolster social good, with that level of support, oh, we can make a big difference. We can do a lot, but I just wanna tell you about three things. One, we can really champion policy change by supporting advocates who are on the front line fighting for mandate reporting reform to reassess why and how our kids are being placed in foster care in the first place. Two, create employment opportunities within your business for youth aging out of foster care by providing internships, apprenticeships, or workforce development. Three, Donate, allocate funds toward mental health wellness. Statistics show that young people in foster care experience PTSD at twice the rate of war veterans. But there are organizations and nonprofits providing resources and programs to help our young people overcome trauma instead of medicating them. Now that's a whole nother story. See, this work takes a village and it demands bold and innovative solutions. Well, we're not just dreaming of change, but we are strategically, intentionally, and deliberately crafting it into existence. Then we could begin providing hope for our young people in foster care like Madison, who once said, people always say that the sky is the limit, but how do they expect us to fly with burnt feathers and broken wings? Well, I believe through storytelling and social enterprises, we can begin repairing those burnt feathers and broken wings to show youth in foster care that one, they are not forgotten. Two, oh, they can do great things because they were created to do great things. And three, the sky is their basement, not their limit. Thank you so much. <laughs>